In this video, I'm going to be breaking down exactly what I think and how I run my offense and defense in a live head-to-head -head regs matchup in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about helping people become the best Madden player that they could possibly become. And so if you are looking to get better at this game, I just want to encourage you right now to click the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. It is completely free to subscribe to the channel. And like I said, it just allows you to know whenever we release new videos that can help you on both the offensive and the defensive side of the ball in Madden 21. Now in this video, I am running the bunch tight end offense and I'm actually running the nickel uh, 335 wide defense. And so if you wanna get the exact offensive and defensive guide that I am using in the uh, in this video, then you can go ahead and get that in the description of this video. I'm gonna leave a link to both of the guides. You can get the offense for 15 bucks and you can get the full defense for just 15 bucks as well. So if you wanna get either one of those, um, like I said, either one of those is just $15. Um, but as you can see right here, open it up with bunch tight end. I've actually gone back to the bunch tight end um, as of late. And really the reason as to why I made that decision is because I think that the bunch tight end is truly the perfect offense. I think it's one of the most simple offenses, but at the same time, I think it truly is the most effective offense that you can possibly run at this point in the game. And so um, as you can see so far, have been pretty consistent and just pretty, uh, pretty effective overall on this first drive. Now my opponent's doing uh, kind of some actually very interesting things with his audibling. He's setting up different types of pressures and things like that. Um, and so I just had to kind of be aware of that and just watch out for that as we kind of go throughout this game. I think he's running a little bit of a three, four style defense. So there you see a little double juke stick work to be able to get up field. But you know, when I get down here in the red area, the one kind of drawback to um, this specific offense is the red zone. I believe that the red zone is the hardest place to score in the entire game. And so um, it is, it can be certainly a little bit difficult to score in the red zone with this offensive scheme. But as you can see here, we might get off the board, but unfortunately Jair Alexander with all that deep out KO and Acrobat is able to actually make a very nice little play on us and is gonna end up with an interception. So very unfortunate to start out a game like that. Now on defense, I am running um, the 3-3-5, three, three, uh, the 335 wide. Uh, I like to go to that from the 335 normal. Now, really quickly, uh, one quick tick up tip on defense. As you're going through your adjustments, if you look at the bottom left hand screen, as soon as it gets down to like one or two seconds, if you just pause the game and then resume it, as you see right there, I get a fresh 15 seconds to be able to continue to make um, just a couple of pre, uh, pre play adjustments here. So that way I can go ahead and complete my substitutions without having to, you know, lose a timeout or anything like that. So, very, very little help. And it does look like this is going to be a good matchup here. It looks like my opponent is going to run a little bit of U trips. Um, so it should be a fun little matchup. And we'll see how the defense fares against one of the better offensive styles uh, in the entire game. Now, really quickly here, it looks like my opponent is going to be running a fast paced, hurry up style of offense. So we're going to have to be kind of aware of that uh, and just working, working, working. And Kevin King uh, gets a nice little interception, a little double juke there, a little stick work, kind of set up some blocks and uh, get us back into scoring range. So good defense by Kevin King. Like I said, if you want to get the 335 wide defensive guide, you can get in the description. We show you how to really just lock down offenses and now we're going to be back on the offensive side of the ball now right here honestly i feel like i had a really good first drive i don't feel like there's really anything that i've done that he's really been able to just you know kind of stop i think it's been kind of a simple little bit uh of an offense so like right here you know just kind of Hit him with the delay fade, kind of, again, just getting him used to having to fend PA boot over. PA boot over, the way that I play offense in Madden is essentially what we want to do is we want to have a play that we must make go, a play that we will make go, and a play that we will run again and again and again. And so like right here, back corner of the end zone, absolute laser. We will run the PA boot over probably 80% of this game. And the reason why is not just because it's a good play, not just because it's a very hard play to stop, but because of our offensive philosophy. And our offensive philosophy simply is this, that we are gonna force you to have to adjust and defend our power play. If you don't wanna defend our power play, we will call it every single play. 
So if you want to just come out and play whatever you know coverage you want to play and it doesn't stop the power play, we're going to go to that consistently. We're going to make you have to actually stop it on purpose. We're not going to let you just stop it accidentally. We are going to consistently go back to that play. It's our Lombardi sweep, right? It's the play that we must make go. It's the play that we will make go. And again, it is the play that we will run again and again and again. Okay, so that's kind of step one. Step two is basically, you know, as we're kind of doing this right there, nice little user lurk uh, with Savage. That's actually a really nice little jump right there. But second step is once he starts to really over commit to stopping that, then we start to maybe mix in our counter play, which is designed to look exactly like our power play. Even the routes themselves, you know, are basically to, designed to look very similar. And then what we want to do is basically force our opponent to have to adjust to stopping the counter play. So it's a, it's basically a counter adjustment, or it might be something like if you were thinking about a boxing analogy, it'd be a jab, 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 and then a right hook, right? So something that you can kind of change it up with. So once they've seen it, probably, you know, and really once they've kind of shown that they're actually going to do something to stop it, um, that's really when we're going to start to adjust. But if they don't do anything to stop it, we'll literally run it the entire game. I have no problem with just checking it down or hitting the delay fade or whatever. We're going to force them to actually have to stop this play. Um, and the reason why and the reason I believe in this so much is because it just simplifies everything, right? If they, It just really does. So then once we've kind of done those two things, then we're going to mix in what we call constraint theory plays. That Those are plays that are just simply change-ups. They're little change-up plays, you know, just kind of, you know, a couple little plays we can go to just to kind of change it up, honestly. I mean, just to do something. And, and you never want to change for change's sake. You want to change it up intentionally. So it's an intentional change, but it is something that we can go to in certain situations. So anyways, all that to say, you know, so far, so, so good on this drive right here and really just going to try to hit the tight end corner in the back corner of the end zone again. And he almost picked me off again. So we've got to be careful with that tight end corner play. It does look like Jair Alexander is going to be able to make some pretty solid plays. So what I'm actually going to do right here, is I am actually going to go ahead and run one of those uh, constraint three plays we just told you about. So it's this play mesh. This mesh play is super, 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 super effective. Uh, as you see right here, a little back corner of the end zone, back shoulder throw, nice little easy read. And this is why this offense is so hard to guard. It can attack the whole field at any point. It has great pass protection. It has great run plays. It has great passing concepts. Um, you can do everything that you want to do from this offense. It truly is a beautiful offense to run. And the reason why it's so good is because it is so so simple okay it's it, it's so simplified you, there's no fluff in this offense and i'm actually running the bunch tight end solo okay so i have two guides on the bunch tight end the first one is the bunch tight end solo that's what i'm running right here it's just straight up bunch tight end and then the second guy that i actually have out on the bunch tight end is if you wanted to run um it alongside of the gun bunch so i've included both of those and if you want to get like i said if you want to get either one of those um those both are in that that guide so you can get all of that down in the description um it's it's all the same guide that you'll get i've actually just kind of bundled it all together for you guys but anyways open it up here i don't think this is um i don't know that i've seen this actually like i know that he's running it says gun u trips week right but i don't think that this is like the new england u trips this is something different because if you take a look at this player here square he's actually very very much so compressed right here we're just going to kind of bum rush down there and just kind of try to force the hand a little bit now defensively i haven't even been talking about this a ton um we actually do have a little bit of a similar strategy to our defense uh than we do to our offense uh and basically what our strategy on defense is is we're really just again we're just trying to kind of um establish something right we have to have a base that we start with and so based on you know our knowledge of formations you know i really like this little zone drop defense and you can start with any of the three you can start with man you can start with zone you can start with match right and i actually have done all three of those at some point in this madden season but at some point you have to start to adjust 
And you have to start to go in between some of those things. And so um, we teach you how to do that in the defensive guide. You also want to make everything look exactly the same so that when you go to a pressure setup, you are you know in a good position to be able to do so. So as you see something like right here, um, simple little pressure setup, just to kind of force our hand, force, force uh, my opponent to have to really, um, you know, just have to really make an adjustment. Now, right here, a um, little bit of a situational play call, but we're actually going to, you know, kind of go to a little bit of a cover two. Um, just really quick pressure right here, trying to show that that's open. And unfortunately, he actually hit us right where we didn't want him to, which was right there. So we're going to have to go to a little bit of man coverage here. When we're bringing the house, um, we're going to send everybody and just try to really, really force the issue. And he actually ends up making a nice catch. And you know what? You got to be okay with that. Honestly, right there, I probably should have gone to some coverage defense. Um, just a simple little coverage defense in the, in the red zone. Might have been a little bit better because I had sent pressure both times. But good drive by my opponent. It's actually a really fun game so far. Uh, my opponent definitely has a system. He has a plan. Uh, and so he kind of knows what it is that he's going to be doing. And really what it comes down to, as far as what I've seen so far, is he's got a nice little corner on the left side that is, is very interesting in how it gets open. And the rest of it's been uh, those post routes over the middle. So I've got to watch out for the post routes, and I've got to watch out for like that corner route by that solo receiver. Those are kind of the keys uh, so far. And so there's some defenses that I can go to that I think will actually be able to, to do a pretty decent job against that. Offensively, we've been playing okay. Um, we've been playing okay. We've just been established MPA boot over. Uh, we really haven't done, I don't think, anything else except for the one time we went to the mesh play down in the red zone. So we'll see how he handles us this drive right here, um, right there. And that was really nice pressure. One of the things he is doing very strategically, and as you see here, he has switched to the 335 wide. He's got Zadarius Smith coming off the edge. So he's getting a nice little one-on-one -on -one matchup right there. So that's just something that I've got to kind of watch as the game goes on and kind of how do I want to handle that. If he do, if he's not going to get him double team, you know, we just have to be careful. But there you see there's that nice little delay fade doing exactly what we wanted to do. And one of the things here, this is a specific situational play call. This is PA boot over, but this is really designed to beat cover three. So if he is in cover three, uh, we should have a pretty good chance at beating it. As you'll see right here on this left side, we're able to beat the cover three over the top for a one play touchdown. If they are gonna just sit in cover three, you can go to that setup. That's, that's what I would call a constraint three play. Um, it's one of those things that if I know you are sitting in this coverage or this coverage or this coverage, I do have the tools uh, to be able to take advantage of that. Um, obviously, we still have check downs, but that was really just more of a, I know he was in Mike Blitz three. I know that he was running some cover three. And honestly, I just wanted to see if it was open. Sure enough, was, and we're able to get a seven, um, a quick seven on the board. Um, honestly, with two minutes here left, though, that he can go down and score, he gets ball at a half. Um, I never, ever, ever choose to receive the ball. If I ever win the coin toss, I will literally always kick. That is one of my most important essential tips to you that if you are playing this game you want to make sure that you are always kicking the ball if you have the opportunity but if they win it obviously you know they chose to kick it so uh, obviously he won the toss we ended up having to receive the ball um and so you know it is what it is but we've got to basically prepare um for the second half because he does get ball in the second half there's that corner route again a uh, nice little corner route right here you see it's kind of delayed uh, and just kind of sits in a nice little pocket. Here, that's a really risky throw, and um, we're almost able to get the interception on on him right there, but you know, really, 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 really risky uh, throw right here. Um, we're gonna go to some pressure. I uh, don't really like how I called that though, and he does end up coming with a nice little read right over the middle. I should have gone man coverage. This formation in particular, from what I've seen so far, uh, when I go to man coverage, it actually is kind of hard for him to beat it. So we're gonna go to man coverage here, just kind of force him to beat it. He does do a good job of hitting the tight end whip route right there on the right side. And we're gonna have to continue to kind of work through this a little bit. Now, what I'm gonna do, he's been seeing man coverage or zone drop coverage the entire game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift into 
um, my match defense for this specific type of formation. So we're going to go to our kind of standard match coverage here. Relatively simple in how we set it up, but I think relatively effective. As you see there, nice little corner up. And there it is right there. Nice, huge interception right on cue. We're able to get the interception. And now we're going to get down and get pretty close to scoring range. That's what I'm talking about. So we're jab, 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 jab. And then a, and once we start to realize what is happening, we can shift into something like what just happened right there. And so we're able to get that, uh, you know, we were able to uh, get that stop. Now, right here, you notice that I'm only able to double team here. So what I'm going to at least do is ID on this right side. But if Zadarius Smith comes off the edge, I do have to be kind of a, a little bit, you know, worried about that. The crossing route's been more open than I've probably given it credit for, but we're just going to take our consistent read. One little piece of advice um, for you guys as you're putting your offenses and defenses together, when you are in a situation like this where it's 7 to 21, um, which means that if I score three points, I'm going to become, uh, I'm going to basically get up by three possessions. I always hedge to the three possessions. And what I mean by that is, I'm willing to be a little bit more conservative on that drive that I can force it into a three possession ball game. So as you saw right there, just simply taking the underneath, not really, you know, being too aggressive, but really just simply taking, you know, the check down, the delay fade, not going for the home run, just simply, you know, okay, all right, we're going to take what the defense gives us here, uh, right here, a little nice little dump off right there. That was actually a really good little play by Rogers, able to get the ball out and put us in a decent position. He's doing some stuff on his end to kind of contain us a little bit. So that's just something that, you know, honestly, he's doing a good job of that. So kudos to my opponent on that. Right here, we're gonna go to the mesh play, just kind of based on what he's doing. Um, and we are able to hit this nice little corner route in the back corner of the end zone again. And that's where I talk about that constraint, they, that constraint theory. If we know for a fact that he's in this shell or if we know, like that's where these constraint theory plays really start to help you because they really do, you know, they, if you know exactly what they're doing, you have the ability to counter that with the, with the material that we put in the offensive guide. And so if you haven't gotten that yet, you're seeing it right now, the offense is playing relatively safe but still being very, very effective. And so as you can see, we're up by three possessions. This is a great spot to be in. And now it's just a matter of closing the game. Um, now you never want to get, what I would say to a lot of people is you never want to go into a defensive situation where you know, you're not uh, being aggressive. You always want to be aggressive, but there's certainly tack, uh, there's certainly tack to that. Um, you don't just want to, like right here, you see that little skinny post, that could get me, and right here, I, that was actually a really, really bad decision. I got clicked off my user and just didn't play very well on that play. Just kind of a bad all-around uh, finish to that play. Pretty good defensive call, but just not a great finish. But anyways, what you're going to notice like right in this situation is I'm going to go back to my zone drop defense. And the primary reason why I'm doing that is really because of the situation that we find ourselves in at this position. So with this position that we're in right here, I don't have to, I just have to make sure that he can't score in one play. That's the biggest thing. And the beauty of a zone drop based defensive scheme. So the zone drop scheme that we talk about in the defensive guide the beauty of that, if you run it the right way and you follow the formula and the rules, it's really hard to score in one play. It's You can score, right? Like you, you can score obviously, but it's really, really hard to do it in one play. It's really a bend but don't break uh, style of a defense. You're gonna force your opponent to have to drive up and down the field on you. You're just gonna have, I mean, he's gonna have to do all of these things right here. So as you see right here, just kind of, Working and working and working and working and right there through us almost through us another interception and as you see what happens is now they're forced to have to take their you know drag or they're forced to have to you know they're forced to have to take some of that stuff and that's really the beauty of being able to again the five components of a successful defense the first one is match defense you saw the match defense come up with a huge interception the second one is man defense you've seen me sh shift into man coverage. Over the, over the course of the situation uh, or of different situations. And it's just forced him to kind of have, you know, have to deal with that. 
The third component is a nice zone, uh, a solid zone drop scheme. The ability to be able to, you know, at, at just whenever you need to, shift into a zone drop scheme that makes it, you know, more of a bend but don't break style of approach to, to defense. And so we're able to do that from here. And then the fourth component is to have, you know, kind of a short yardage or a, a run defense. So something that you can call to that will, if they are running, and this guy hasn't been a big runner, um, but if they are a runner something that you can go to that can really do a good job you know of kind of taking that away right there i, I thought we should have had an interception um, and then the fifth component is that you have something that you can basically you know go ahead and send some pressure so like right here I'm just going to kind of change it up send some pressure uh, i'm going right over there that another you know another one that i was kind of right there on but you know simple 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 stuff but the beauty of this is when you play sound defense and you follow the rules that we outlined for you in the guide um it, you see my opponent is moving the ball but he's not scoring one play, you know. And so what we what we really believe is that if you can focus on holding your opponent to, um, you know, right there, they're going to make mistakes. So if you can force uh, your opponent to, you know, again, have to work a little bit to get upfield, they're going to make mistakes like what my opponent just made. He ended up quitting out. If you guys want to get the exact offense and defense that I ran in that game. I'm going to leave a link to both of those in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys later on our next YouTube video.